Okay, women's heights are normally distributed with an average height of 64 inches and a standard deviation of two and a half inches. Approximately what percentage of women are shorter than 4'11 or 59 inches tall? So I've underlined some key phrases here. Normally distributed jumps out at me in this problem. That's indicating that we're dealing with a bell curve. So women's heights fall under the bell curve shape distribution. They tell us the average is standard deviation and then they ask us approximately what percentage of women are shorter than this in the height here. This approximately what percentage is another key phrase to indicate empirical rule. So the fact that we're dealing with something that's bell-shaped and they ask approximately what percentage, as opposed to the minimum percentage or at least what percentage, those phrases, when it says minimum or at least, correspond to Chebyshev's theorem. Approximately is the language we use when we're dealing with the empirical rule and normally distributed is required for that rule. You must be using a bell curve to use the empirical rule. And if you combine that with this phrase here, to me, it tells me that this is an empirical rule problem. Whenever you're dealing with an empirical rule problem, I recommend drawing the bell curve. I think that's very helpful. So we're gonna go ahead and draw a bell-shaped curve as best as we can here. And I'm gonna label the information from the problem on the curve. So what I'm gonna do is look at this average height of 64. I'm gonna go ahead and label that in the middle. And I'm gonna call that the mean. And then I'm gonna go on to say that um, the standard deviation is two and a half. And I'll put that up there in the left hand corner. Okay, from there, what I want to do normally is I want to figure out what side of the curve the number they're talking about is on. In this case, I think 59 is clearly less than 64. So I'm going to go ahead and put 59 somewhere here on the curve to the left of 64. And I'm going to draw a line indicating where that would be on the curve above. Now they want to know the percentage of women that are shorter than this height. So shorter means to the left. These are the people who are shorter. These people are the ones who are 58 inches, 57, so on and so forth. And we want to know approximately what percentage is contained within that area. All right, well, if I draw a little mark here indicating the halfway point between these two numbers, and I'm doing that because what I want to do next is I want to figure out exactly how far away is 59 from 64. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can actually um, do it in an equation, and in that case it's kind of like finding k in Chebyshev's theorem. So you can say let's take the value 59 and then subtract off the mean and divide by the standard deviation, which is 2 and a half. And when we do that, we end up with 59 minus 64. We end up with a negative 5, right? And then we divide by 2.5, and we see 2.5 goes in that twice, because it's two standard deviations away from the mean. If I count by 2.5, which is another way to do it, and by the way, this is negative. The negative just indicates that you're below average, right? So don't really worry about that as much. We're more concerned with the absolute value of this number. Now, back to the idea of counting by 2.5 instead, we could also do that. We could say, well, if I go from 64 and I take away a 2.5, I'll end up with 61.5, right? 61.5, that's kind of the number here. And if I take away another 2.5, I end up at 59. So that's another way to figure out that it's two standard deviations below average. One, two standard deviations below average. Okay, now once I figured out that, then from there I have to work with my rule. So I have to know Chebyshev's rule, or sorry, the empirical rule, and figure out what it tells me. So we have some rules. We say that when k is equal to 1, that corresponds to 68% of the data, approximately. When k is equal to 2, it corresponds to an interval that captures 95% of the data. And when k is equal to 3, it corresponds to an interval that captures 99.7% of the data. But we want to do um, kind of a little drawing here to help us see when they say 68%, what are they talking about? Well, 68% is dealing with one standard deviation away from the mean. So that's just one standard deviation away, and that'd be 34 and 34 on each side. For the two standard deviations, we're talking about a scenario where you're working from not one, but two standard deviations away. And so in that case, you have half of 95 on each side or 4750 in each piece. All right, and then finally, the last one obviously would be three standard deviations. And again, trying to squeeze in these little drawings, is difficult, but it would be three standard deviations half of 99.7 on each side. Okay, so regardless of that information, um, what we want to do then is to think about 
how we're going to determine this because we have drawings that talk about what's in between, right? What's in between one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below. This one is two above and two below, and this one is three above and three below. But our question is though, how do we work a problem like this where we're talking about just a little sliver outside of two standard deviations? Well, it means, you know, since our k was two, we should be looking at this kind of a drawing and trying to think about it. So I'm going to draw a standard deviation marker here and one here, and I'm going to say, hey, look, from this span to this span, this whole distance here, that's 95%, right? But each half, because the curve is symmetric, each half is 95% divided by 2. And that's going to work out to be 47.5% if you either do that in your head or in your calculator. That means that this half is also 47.5% for the same reason that the other half is, right? It's symmetric. The two sides of the curve are equal. Then what we can figure out is, okay, well, if this total span is 95%, this tail and this tail have to add up to the remaining 5% to give you 100%. So if it's symmetric, this must be 2.5%, this must be 2.5%. That's one way to think about it. The final way to think about it, and the way I think is probably most useful, is to realize that, look, this half of the curve from here over, all the way over, must contain 50%. That must be true because it's half of the curve. From the mean over, it's half of the curve. So if that contains 50% of the data, and this amount is 47.5, then what must this be? Well, you can just subtract them because we know that this space plus this space adds up to 50. So if I take 50 and, and take away the 47.5, I will get 2.5%. So that's going to be my final solution, the approximate area. That is less than 59 inches is equal to 50% minus 47.5%. And of course, that's going to be 2.5%. So again, it's a good idea to do the drawing so you see this clearly. But if we add 47 and a half and two and a half, we will come up with a full 50. And just to recap, the other possible way to think of it is to say, they look, from here to here, the two spans and the two positions, when k is two, two standard deviations below, two standard deviations above the mean, that span captures 95%. So from here to here is 95%. It must mean that outside of that, this area must be just 5%. And if it's 5% and the curve is symmetric, each one of these tails here, they have to be 2.5%. That's another way to reason it out. Wherever you reason it, though, the answer turns out to be 2.5%.